Guys, we just got this car delivered this morning and I've already got some guys breaking it down. It wasn't all together when we got it. The intake was already off because when the owner bought this car, it had some bent valves. So he took the head to the machine shop and had it rebuilt. And then he put it on a trailer and brought it to us where we're gonna do the water pump and the front main seals. And that's pretty much gonna do it for the engine. Overall, this is not one of the worst cars we've ever seen. There are a few electrical things we've got to sort out. The wiper motor isn't working and this window doesn't work. And then back here, the hatch doesn't lock. So you can see it's missing one of the pins. We'll get that put back on and get that fixed. And then over here, we have to fix this seat. You can see that the rail is completely rusted. But overall, it's not really that bad of a car and hopefully we can knock out some of these projects today and make this car look a little bit better. But as I mentioned, it's not really the worst car we've ever seen. And we're gonna try and get in here to the seals today. All right, so Patrick's got the water pump off now and he's working on removing the oil cooler. All right, so TJ's getting the engine cleaned up down there and We've got a 6R housing here that we're going to be using to replace this old 5R housing. Alright, all the old seals are off and the new ones are ready to go in. TJ's got the new air oil separator seals in, so next we'll work on the front seals. Alright, TJ's replacing the upper balance shaft seals. Next we'll remove the cam sprocket and replace the seal behind it. Well, you can say that this seal is definitely an original one. All right, TJ's got the cam tower all sealed up now. All right, TJ's already got a new hatch pin put in. So we're probably gonna have to break these seat rails. TJ cut them right there, but those bolts are probably gonna break once we take them out of the floor. TJ got the seat out and all the mounts look pretty good except this one we're gonna have to extract that broken bolt there. And here's how the rails look. Pretty bad condition, but we got some new ones going on. All right, so they're just cleaning up a few things before putting the seat back in. And so now they're going to be looking at this power window over here and why it isn't working on the driver's side. We got 12 volts here at the regulator, but it still isn't working, so we're going to pull it out and replace it. The old window regulator's out, and we're pulling one now to install. Got another regulator over in this part's car. We're going to try it. All right, we got one that works. All right, we got the window working again. All right, so it's a little slow since the battery's almost drained, but we've also almost got the seat back in. So once we get this engine finished, that's just about it. TJ's getting the seat back in now. All right, so the oil cooler is in. Next, we'll go ahead and install the water pump. We now have the oil cooler and the water pump installed. We've also resealed the cam tower and the balance shafts. So next, I'll go ahead and get the rear belt cover on. I now have the belt cover on, so tomorrow we'll get the belts on. So I have the belts back on now, and as you can see, everything is lined up perfectly. I'll take you underneath and show you the lower balance shaft. All 
All right, TJ's got the distributor back on now. So next, we're going to install the intake. TJ's got the intake on, and now we're working on the vacuum lines. We're also going to be removing this aftermarket cruise control system. TJ's in the fender well removing the bolts that holds the servo in. So we're removing the aftermarket cruise control and you can see over here that the wiring switches over to speaker wire and then continues here it's just twisted up and covered with some black duct tape. Huh. TJ's replacing the brake reservoir seals. He's got the new ones in and here are the old ones. TJ's got the brake reservoir on now, so next we're going to place this hose that goes to the brake booster. You can see that someone cut into it and added a fitting. I believe it was for the aftermarket cruise control, so we're going to get rid of that. And you can also see up here that a lot of these hoses are falling apart and they sat open for so many years that they got packed with dirt. So we're going to go through and clean all that up as well. So TJ's got everything cleaned up now and it looks pretty good. All right, we got the brake booster hose replaced now. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw the old one away. Today we're just looking around and seeing what else can be removed from the engine bay. Yesterday we removed that old aftermarket cruise control and all that speaker wiring that was wired up with. And today looks like we got some lamp cord running down through here. TJ's cleaning out the air box. You can see the filter that was removed from it and we got a brand new filter going in. Okay, so we pretty much got this car back together now. I'm just waiting for the injectors to come back from being cleaned and flow matched before we can start this car up. This evening, I'm gonna install the new thermostat which just came in. Ordinarily, I like to install these whenever I do the water pump, but the only thermostat that I had was the one that the owner gave me, which is a stance. And since I've had a lot of issues with these, I just thought I'd go ahead and upgrade him to the Waller here. So that way we don't have to take this apart later on and fix any issues that this one could cause. New thermostat in now, and I'll be sending this one back home with the owner. If you remember in my Red 924S series of videos, I installed one of these with the exact same part number, and it would sit at the third mark the entire time, which the owner didn't like. So I had to go back in and drain all the coolant and change the thermostat over to one of these, and that's one of my least favorite jobs. So I'd rather just do that now than to find out later. I've got to go back in there and correct it. So we got the fuel injectors back and next I'm going to clean the rail out so that way we can install them. I also need to install a battery and I'm going to try and see if we can't get some fuel up here to the rail even if I have to use a jumper. So here's a quick look at the injectors. You can see that they replaced all the o-rings and even cleaned them up and repainted them for us. And over here we have the sheet. So now I'm going to get the fuel rail cleaned up and hopefully we can get this car started up. So I've been letting the fuel rail sit with some carb cleaner in it. Now it's ready to dump out. I thought you guys would like to see what comes out of here. So if you got a car that's been sitting for a while, you're going to want to make sure you clean the rail out before you put it back on.
You can see just how much crud was done in the fuel rail. I had to do this a few times to get it all out. And don't be afraid to use the whole can if necessary. So I've got the fuel rail cleaned up and installed now. Next I'll put the battery in and I'll jump the DME relay to flush out any crud that may be in this hose here. Once all that's done, then I can connect that hose and hopefully we can get this car started up. So I've got a good fully charged battery sitting here. I'm gonna get this in and hopefully we can flush the fuel system out. The battery's connected now, so next I'm gonna pump some fuel through this hose here and make sure there isn't any crud left in it when I connect it. And normally I like to use a gas can to do this, but this hose is so short that it just isn't possible. So as you can see, I've got the jumper installed now. I've also checked the fuse. There was a little bit of corrosion on it, but I've cleaned that off and it still isn't running. The owner mentioned that he wasn't hearing the fuel pump run when he was trying to turn it over. So the next thing I'll do is go back there and make sure that we've got power at the pump. So I have 12 volts at the relay, but even with it jumped, I don't have 12 volts at the fuse. So I'm gonna have to dig in and figure out why that is. If you look up here, you can see that there's a lot of wiring that's been patched in here and I'll have to look and see if they've disconnected anything. So according to the schematic that I have, that wire should run from the relay to this fuse up here. And once I removed the cover on the fuse box, a few other devices fell out. You can see a relay here and all the wiring that's spliced in. I'm not sure exactly what that goes to yet. I did find this as well, and I believe this goes to the cruise control that they had installed. But all the wiring for it is over here and then runs outside of the car. So this could have been an aftermarket alarm that they had installed, or of course it could have also went to that cruise control. So I'm not going to know until I start pulling it out what all this does, but in the meantime, I'm going to try and trace back that wire and make sure everything's connected and I'm going to clean up some of this mess while I'm at it. So as I mentioned, 87B right there at the DME relay runs directly to this fuse here for the fuel pump. And while there is some spliced wiring in here, everything for this fuse looks good. So what I did was I pulled everything out and removed some of the corrosion that was on the back of this fuse block here. You can see that all these fuses are corroded and none of them are getting good contact. Same with these in here. So I cleaned this out with a steel brush and then used some electrical contact cleaner to get all the corrosion off. And you can see now I have good contact and so the fuel pump should run now. So I'm now getting voltage at this fuse. Unfortunately, the fuel pump still isn't working. So now's when I'll go around back and just check the voltage at the pump. All right, so once I got around back, I can actually hear the fuel pump running. There must not be any fuel in the system. So the fuel pump is running now and it's also good news that there isn't any fuel in the tank because I'm getting ready to change the strainer and that hose back there. Once that's done, I'll push some fuel through the system into this bottle here just to flush everything out and then we should be ready to start this thing up. So I spoke with the owner and he said that there should be plenty of fuel in the tank. So before I go back there and start dumping it out, I figure I'd go ahead and replace these hood struts since they just arrived. That way we don't need this pole anymore. All right, that is so much better now. All right, I've got the fuel drained out back here and there wasn't very much at all. So the next thing I'll do is get the strainer out and replace that and the hose. So now we can see exactly why there wasn't any fuel in the lines. I had to just assume that most of it had dripped out, but this strainer here is completely clogged. Now that we've got it out, we can go ahead and flush the tank, get the new one in, and hopefully we can start this car up. All right, so I've still got the bucket up underneath there and I've got some gas here. I'm gonna pour it into the tank and hopefully I'll flush the rest of the crud out. Once that's done, we can put the new hose and the new strainer in.
All right, I flushed the rest of that crud out and clean fuel is now coming out of the tank. The reason why I didn't clean this tank in more detail was because the owner's already done that. All I need to do is make sure that the rest of the stuff came out. And now we're ready to put the strainer in. Tank's flushed out with the new strainer in and the new hose on, so it looks like we're done here. So last night I got the fuel tank flushed out. Today I'm going to put some fresh fuel in, then we're going to flush these lines and fill the coolant. I've got the tank full of fresh gas now. We're going to flush the system. I'm going to put the spark plug wires on and we're going to try and start this thing up. So as you can hear, the pump is running and there's fresh fuel in the line. Unfortunately, it is not reaching the engine up here. Engine, the fuel pump's running, so before I went any further, I thought I would check to make sure that the fuel filter wasn't clogged. And as you can see, it looks to be relatively new, and there isn't any fuel reaching this point, so it's unlikely that's the issue. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this pump and just have a look at it. It looks to be fairly new, but I'm just going to make sure everything's wired up correctly and we'll see what's going on with it. All right guys, so I've got the pump pulled down now and as I mentioned I was going to check the wiring because I had a feeling that it was running backwards. As you can see, the brown wire is on the positive and the green and black wire is on the negative and I think that's exactly what's going on. I think with the stock pumps, ordinarily you can't mix the wiring up since they're two different sizes but some of these aftermarket pumps you can so that's what I wanted to check. I'm going to get these wires swapped around and hopefully the pump will work properly. All right, everything's wired up now. So, it's the moment of truth, I guess. There you go. It's hard to get a good connection on this battery post, but the fuel is coming out. There you go, I don't want to run too much, but that should be clean enough right there. I'll clean these terminals before I put them back on. But as for now, you can see all the nasty fuel is out. So we can connect this line here. Maybe we can get this thing fired up. All right, I've got the fuel line connected and next I'll go through and clean all this wiring up. But as for now, I just want to try and start the car and see if it'll fire up. Alright, so you could hear a tapping sound as the engine was running, and that's actually because it looks like we didn't get number three plugged in very well down here. So, I'm gonna try and remedy that, and once that's done, we'll start it up again. Alright, as you can tell, that's a whole lot better. All right guys, now that we got this car running, the next thing I wanna do is change the oil. My best guess is that this oil is probably close to 20 years old, so we're gonna get it out of there, put some fresh oil in there before we drive it around. All right, all the old oil is out now. All right guys, I got the oil drained out and I'll fill that up tomorrow. Tonight, I wanna go ahead and get all these old fuses out of here. And then we're gonna take some electronic spray and clean all these contacts here since they're all rusted up.
All right, we've got the corrosion out of the fuse box and some fresh oil in the engine. Next, I'll work on getting some new fuses in and cleaning up some of that wiring. All right, guys, I got the fuse box cleaned up and I had to replace a lot of these fuses, but they're all in their correct spot. And down here, you can see some of the ones I had to throw away. They're just in really bad condition. So anyway, that's going to do it. I'm going to try and start this thing up so we can take it on test drive now. Hey guys, that's the first time she's been driven in about 20 years. The brakes are frozen up, but overall not too bad. We've got high bar oil pressure, and so we're trying to figure out what's going on with the brakes, and maybe she can go home. All right, one of the last things I needed to do was replace the wiper motor, so I've got another one here. And as you can see, it's plugged in and working. Now I just need to remove the old one and get this one in. So I got the replacement wiper motor installed last night and we're getting ready to test it. I'm going to stand the wiper blades up like this so that way they don't scratch the windshield. You can see there's a lot of dirt down here and there aren't any blades on here. I think he's replacing the windshield anyway, but no need to make it worse. So I'm just going to flip them on and as you can see they work perfectly. Turn them off and they go right back where they were. Last night I installed some new sun visor clips and that's just about going to do it for this car. The owner said that he'll work on the brakes himself so he's going to come pick it up today. So after sitting for nearly 20 years, this car is finally running again. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to take it out on the road since the tires were so dry rotted and the brakes were locked up. But the owner is going to be taking care of all that. So anyway, guys, that's just about going to do it for this video. If you'd like to stay up to date with some of the projects we're working on around the shop, be sure to join us on Facebook. I'll leave a link in the description below. I also want to thank everyone who supports this channel on Patreon since these videos would not be possible without you. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.